Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mystery Theory Podcast. I didn't think I would have this podcast available on YouTube by Wednesday, but if you are watching this podcast, or I should say listening to this podcast on YouTube, please read the pinned comment where I'm going to share with you all this craziness that's been going on around and I'm pretty sure not everyone cares about. So, if you're interested, please check that out. Now, if you are new here in the podcast, you found it through YouTube or you are on the Google Play or even iTunes, whatever app you use to listen to podcasts, I want to welcome you. And here, I like to share with you true crime cases. And not only the case itself, but I try to share not only my thoughts, but kind of give you a different perspective than most um, news media will give you. Okay, so if you enjoy it, please stay until the end. And if you care to leave a rating, you can do so on iTunes. And I'm not sure about Google Play, but I'm I'm assuming that they have something. So that will help me a lot to get more exposure with the podcast. Today's case, it's going to be a little bit controversial. Okay, so please, if you read my comment or my post on the community page on the mystery theory on YouTube, you probably know why this will be a little bit controversial. However, I'm not afraid to speak up my mind and I will respect whatever you think of this case. I will never try to change your mind or your beliefs or your morals. Those are yours. You're welcome to keep them. But I expect the same thing. You know, a little bit of respect as far as what I think. I know that there was a lot of mixed opinions on that post. So if you got mad on that post, maybe just skip this podcast or even (laughs) the channel if it offended you so much or the podcast in the future that's okay we don't have to agree but I just want to bring it to your attention because I think that most people don't know that this happens and how a crazy story And I'm telling you, this is a crazy story. Ends up, in my humble opinion, rewarding the criminal behind it. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there and start with today's case. Now, this case took place on Newport Beach. Have you been to Newport Beach? It is stunning. It is rich people, place houses, streets, stores, malls. I mean, if you can think of it, you can probably find it in Newport Beach. It's, in case you are not from the States, it's in California. And it's in the coastal part of California. I believe, and again, I I love California coast, so I am there several times a year. I believe it's in between Huntington Beach, which is a pretty big, long um, coastline uh, or coast area, I should say, in between Huntington Beach and I'm sure there are other beaches in between, but just so you have a, an idea if you've been there. And I think the other side is Corona del Mar. If you haven't been to Corona del Mar, you have to. It's a beautiful beach. It's like out of this world, they have tide pools and $10 million houses overlooking the ocean. If you go at night, 
uh, you will find a different, um, what is it? divers is it scuba diving that they do yeah i don't know you can see their lights going under the water and it's just a magical place i love it well newport is kind of in between i think corona del mar is still part of newport beach not sure but now i gave you a an idea of the location again this is a rich people place with most homes they have their own ports so in they're not tiny okay these ports will accommodate a 50 foot long yacht and um, this is the kind of place that people don't wait until the weekend to go surfing or boating most people have enough money to just go every day if they want to so it's pretty busy it's beautiful, breathtaking. And uh, I remember I met a guy there. He was an older guy that sold everything. And this, this was a rich guy that <laughs> sold everything he had to purchase a tiny condo that when you open your patio door, you basically fall into the sand. They're expensive. They're beautiful. And now you get the kind of people that live in the area. It is pretty safe to assume that if you live there, you probably have some kind of money that will allow you to. Now, Tom Hawks it was a good guy that grew up in a California farm. So he's not specifically from there. He had a brother. His name is Jim. And they loved surfing and sailing and they they spent a lot of time in the ocean as they were growing up they had different interests yet kind of the same if you ask me tom went into the military he even went to vietnam and later on he became a probation officer while the brother jim became eventually a police chief now tom was a fit guy with a wonderful smile uh, those kind of smiles that you can't forget i can't get it out of my mind and believe me this was an older guy but th it was that kind of guy he had a smile that really you just could see that he was a happy person somebody you want to be around now he got married and he had two boys ryan and matthew i think by the time that the oldest if i'm not mistaken could be wrong but uh, when the oldest was around five years old he got a divorce and he ended up and i'm talking about tom hawks getting the boys and he raised them the best that he could and the boys that now are grown men said that they had everything they ever wanted a loving dad caring you know present father but he met this girl while the boys were still young okay so this was not later on in life while the boys were still young he met Jackie, and uh, Jackie was a sweet, down-to-earth woman. He he was kind of apprehensive about dating, but there was something about Jackie that he just couldn't shake off, and he decided to introduce her to his family and friends first. They immediately clicked. I mean, Jackie was also a very fun person to be around. And, you know, it, it was something meant to be. The boys loved her. When they met her, they started that bond immediately. And they just loved to spend time together with her. They got married. And, again, 
Uh, they had a lot of friends, so they had 150 people over at their wedding. But you have to understand that neither Tom or Jackie were rich people, okay? They worked uh, their entire lives and they saved money by being frugal. Uh, Tom, I think, uh, or maybe while they were married, they invested in some kind of properties um, and they were getting money out of that. And again, he and actually both of them were good at saving money. So by the time that Tom turned 50, they started all the arrangements to retire. And he did. He did retire in his 50s. And they had a dream. They wanted to live in a boat, in a yacht. I don't know if they care if it was a yacht, but they needed something big enough so they could live and travel in it. So they ended up buying this 55-foot yacht for $300,000, and they named it Well Deserved. Now, you have to understand that this was not the newest yacht. It's not one of the, you know, 2020 or year back then kind of yacht. And I knew, assumed that with $300,000, it would be something, you know, out of the dealership, but not really in this case. So he updated a few things, including the GPS, and made it comfortable enough for them, the couple, to live in. They had this, uh, and I'm going to refer to this yacht as the well-deserved. No, they had the well-deserved at the Newport Harbor on 15th Street, but they also had a smaller boat that would take them to it, okay? Those are important details that you have to keep in mind in this case. They bought it and they started traveling as soon as they could. They went from Newport Beach to Mexico, which sounds like a very long trip but not really um newport beach is in case you didn't know is in southern california just a few miles from san diego which is well quite a few miles <laughs> from san diego but close enough that you could go on um a day trip i mean it wasn't going to take them days to get to mexico that's the point now again Tom was a very fit guy, so he, one of the things that uh, it was pointed out is that even though he was traveling and doing all those things, and he was in his 50s, and he was retired, he would take, you know, gym stuff to the boat, like weights and things and use parts of the boat, or I don't want to call it boat, it's not a boat, he had different parts of the yachts, or the well-deserved to exercise and keep himself um, fit. Now, they lived this lifetime, lifestyle for two years. And all of a sudden, they were going to have a grandson. And this was uh, from Matt. And Matt was, again, Tom's son. And, but Jackie loved this voice as if they were their her own and to be honest it was mentioned that the boys call her mom even though they had their mom alive you see Jackie had an accident I don't remember if she was 21 or 22 but because of that accident she was not able to have kids so she wanted to become that devoted grandma that honestly all she wanted was to spend that time with that little baby that she was so excited about. So the baby was born and they decided to sell that boat or yacht, <laughs> the well-deserved. <laughs> 
And they said, mm-hmm, let's buy a smaller one. And let's buy a house in Mexico. So we can be closer to the grandbaby in Arizona. So now you get a location in your head. Both of them, as I mentioned, were very frugal. So they decided to sell it by owner instead of having a third party that would take part of the commission. They, they listed it and they put it basically in this magazine. And um, all of a sudden they had a buyer that was very interested in buying the Waldo's Art. So they met with this buyer, and I'll tell you more about the meeting later on, but that's when they decided, we got somebody, we're going to sell the well-deserved, let's go party. So they invited all of their friends and family members that were around and went for a last hurrah, I guess, (laughs) with uh, everyone to Catalina Island. That's how they described it. So, this was going to be the last trip, and they wanted to enjoy it. Now, after that, they were going to meet with a buyer and do one trip as a quote unquote test drive. They wanted to see how it worked and everything, and the buyer was rather young. So you would benefit from this experience. Now, all of a sudden, the day passes. And when people try to come in contact with the couple, the hawks, they're not able to reach them. And there are no calls, no visits, no texts, no nothing. And this was very out of the ordinary. And if you're my family member, you know that I am that way. I forgot to call back. I am bad at replying text messages. When I'm busy, I say, okay, I read it, but I'll get back to it later because I am doing dishes or I am driving or I am dropping kids at school where I'm having a conversation with one of them. And I am super bad at getting back at people if I read the message and not reply immediately. Shannon can testify of that. And a lot of people that know me personally (laughs) can do that too. But they are different, okay? And that's what I'm trying to mm, kind of explain here. There's two kinds of people. Those that take a time, take their time to get back. And then there was the hawks. They really were on top of their game. They had the time and they had, they were not busy per se. And so they took the time to contact everyone almost every day. If you call them, they picked up. If you text them, they'll get back. If you email them, they were on top of their game, especially around their family. So now the son calls them and cannot get a hold of them. So he decides to call his uncle and Tom's brother, the ex-police chief, Jim. And um, he lives in San Diego, I believe, at the time he was living there. And he said, please let me you know, help me find my dad. I don't know what's up with him. He's not picking up. Can you go check up on him? And I'm assuming that the son is in Arizona. So it was easier to contact somebody who was there just to check on them. So Jim, Tom's brother, decides to go and check where they had the well-deserved which was there, by the way. But the couple was not there, or their car, which was a Honda C, is it CRV? Yeah. Now, this, you're talking about to an ex-police chief. So he's not gonna go with, oh well, 
they're not here. He looked around. He realized that whoever left the well-deserved there, left in a hurry, it was not tied properly, which I have no idea how you're supposed to do that. But he noticed that it was not tied properly. Uh, things were not how the couples kept them. It almost looked like a messy you know, place. And when they left, it seemed like they did in a hurry. Not careful enough. And Tom was the kind of guy that he paid attention to every single detail. So that was a red flag. Now they had to find out who was the buyer because according to what Tom told them, right now the well-deserved had a new owner. All they knew about this buyer is that he was going to meet them for a test drive the next day after the party. And again, we can, I guess, confirm that they did go out because Jackie called the friend and said, we're still at sea. We will call you when we're back. And so this confirms that they were there with the buyer and they were going to go to Catalina Island. Now, this is crazy because now nobody knows who's the buyer. I mean, who's this guy? The only thing that they know is that Tom mentioned to a friend that the buyer was a child actor. So Jim leaves a card in the well-deserved. It said something like, I'm a retired police chief. I'm looking for Jackie and Tom. Please give me a call. I have to talk to you. I don't remember if he said that he was Tom's brother, but I remember him saying who he or what he used to do. So later on, he is contacted by the new owner and she is Jennifer DeLeon. And she and her husband, Skyler, bought the boat. She tells him we paid in cash and we paid in full. However, we have no idea where the hogs are. But I really, really need to talk to them, she said. I don't know a lot about boats and my husband doesn't either. And there have been a few things that we don't know and we have questions and we're wondering if they could help us. She said that they gave them the money and then they got into a car and left. They also mentioned that they were going to move to Mexico. So she assumed that he, they left to go live in Mexico. But it was all very bizarre. However, Jim said that the lady sounded very bubbly, convincing, and nothing that, you know, you could suspect immediately. Now, Jim, at that point, calls the lady that keeps their books. Apparently, she's in Arizona. And um, he asks, you know, did they deposit $300,000? Uh, is there any kind of transactions going on with their bank or credit cards? And she said, no. I mean, I am the one that keeps the books uh, for them. I checked everything. There's no activity. There's no deposit. There's nothing. So that Friday morning, uh, Jim filed a uh, missing report, uh, missing person report for both of them. And that's where everything started. Now, November 26, 2004, they've been missing for about 11 days. I kind of forgot to mention the dates before, but by November 26, it's been 11 days and they started digging, the police started digging on Skylar. 
you know, and the wife, Jennifer. They knew that an ex-police chief, uh, he did everything he could as far as a civilian now, but they went with his um, hunch, I guess, that there was some, something going on, maybe not with Jennifer, but with Skylar. But you have to understand that Skylar, oh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Skylar, because they found out that he was a felon and that he was on probation, actually. He was out on probation. Skylar, his name to me, okay, let's start with that. Um, his name in the beginning was John something. Um, can't remember. Uh, he changed his name eventually to Skylar, and I'll tell you when he did that. But he grew up in a dysfunctional home. He had a dad that divorced, remarried, divorced. Apparently the dad was involved with making some kind of drugs. And the guy, not only that, but was not the best dad. Um, he wanted and needed money, so he got Skylar into acting. Uh, he worked as an extra in the Power Rangers. Um, and according to even Skylar, it was hard for him to remember his lines. He hated acting because of that. And even his dad um, would stay behind the camera and yell at Skylar for not remembering simple um, lines that he was given. It was not like a monologue or something like that. And it was confirmed that several times the father had to be escorted out. Now, you have to understand that the father was, in my humble opinion, a bully. He believed that Skylar was a weak kid and he despised him. This is according to, okay, records, okay? The guy really, really didn't like him. And this is not coming only from Skylar. This was the stepmom that she also talked about, about some of the punishments that he endured as a kid. Uh, there was in one of the documentaries, uh, this lady mentioned that while she was married, Skylar was biting his nails and the father decided to put toothpicks in between the skin and the nails so he would stop doing it. Later on, we will learn that he was not only physically abused and mentally abused by his father, but he was also sexually abused. And I don't know if it was the father. It was not. There were different reports. The one that was uh, repeated in a lot of different articles is that it was by somebody the dad knew. Remember, the dad is doing some... Uh, shady business with drugs so you know the kind of friends that he could probably had at the time were not the best but despite that um skylar decided to join the marines and uh this is where everything kind of starts going weird that's the word weird he gets out eventually of the Marines, but he tells um, everyone, you know, his part on the Marines. And he was part of the Marine Corp Recon, which is, I didn't know this, but apparently is um, part of the elite forces of the Marines. And he also kind of flaunted about 62 confirmed kills. And, I mean, he took classes. He really worked hard to be on that specific force but he eventually he came out of the marines pretty young um and he decided to change his name to again skylar de leon because he used the name used to be john and with a different last name that i don't remember but um because he didn't really want to be associated with his criminal dad the Marines left something on him. 
and he wanted to do good. He wanted to stay away from trouble. And he thought, well, the best way to do that is just to start over. Good idea, he thought. So he ended up meeting this girl, Jennifer Henderson. Now, Jennifer has good parents, religious people, go to church every Sunday, good morals, you know, good parents, and people in general. But how did they meet? Well, Skylar and Jennifer met online because they were part of completely two different worlds. And if it wasn't because of that, it would have been hard for them to meet. They didn't run in the same circles. They didn't have the same friends. But you know, the internet. So they started online and then moved to phone calls. And then all of a sudden they were dating. And after a year of dating, they decided to get married. According to Jennifer, they had uh, two weddings. One was in Corona del Mar. And the other one was a... A formal wedding. The one at the beach, it was in shorts and flip flops and relaxed. I mean, I would have loved to get married there. This is one of the most magical beaches with rock formations and tide pools and the most beautiful sunsets. But she still had that big formal wedding with her white dress. If you thought that this was a great marriage, think again. Skylar had no career, so he was unemployed, and uh, Jennifer was a statistician. And she did good for what she did, but not enough for their lifestyle. Apparently, according to Jennifer's mom, Jennifer probably got pregnant the wedding night, and they had a daughter, and her name is Haley. They didn't have enough money to pay rent, so they were living in the garage of Jennifer's parents. They were broke. They were in debt. And just so you know, this garage is not like a full functioning apartment. It was almost like we're living with my parents because they were had to go inside to use the bathroom and the kitchen. And all of a sudden, Jennifer was pregnant again. So if you really think about it, this is not your typical $300,000 yacht buyer, according to the police after learning all these things. So on November 27th, 2004, uh, after the t 12 days, they sent a detective to the boat. Um, it was messy. And again, same feeling as Jim, they left in a hurry. So... One of the pictures that he took, it was a Target receipt. And one of the, the detectives mentioned if there was a um, killer kit, I guess, or murder kit, um, it would be something like this. Trash bags, tums, and bleach. And I just didn't understand it at first. But once the detective started explaining, it kind of made sense. But you can also see it as a trash bag we bought a yacht and we had to clean it with bleach and maybe I am having a hard time with my stomach but everything was pointing to a direction that they really thought it was incriminating Skylar but when they checked the security cam cameras at Target and I mean I think you get a picture while you're paying and then you get surveillance of when you get in and out and all the doors. But they realized that this was not Skylar. This was a heavier and older man. And when they digged a little bit, they realized that this was Jennifer's dad. So Jennifer um, asked the dad, according to him, when the police contact him, that to go buy that stuff to clean the new boat. So the police ask him, where's the couple? And they said, well, they are at church. Um, 
but you can go ahead and talk to them. So the police goes to this church and talk to Jennifer again, who comes up with the same thing. I really need to talk to this couple. They left a bunch of stuff inside the, the well-deserved. I don't know what to do with it. I am worried. And um, when they ask Kyler about it, he says, well, I bought the yacht. I have the paperwork. It is notarized. I have signature. I have fingerprints. So it was kind of like a dead end, but not really. The next day, Skylar went to the station for questioning. He seemingly wanted to help, really. He admits a few things that a lot of people don't admit on a first interview. Okay, so that was kind of weird. And kind of made the police believe that maybe this guy is not lying. I mean, who would incriminate themselves just to try to get out of somebody who's just missing? But he says that he was basically laundering money. Uh, apparently, this was drug money that he was laundering and by buying this yacht. And that's why, yes, he didn't have the resources to buy it for himself. But he was using that money. That they went out for a test. Then they came back and they did the whole thing in the parking lot. Uh, Skylar brought a suitcase full of money. But laundering money that he had Tom got excited but nervous he asked is it all here and so um, they signed the papers everything with the notary there and then they just drove off Jackie and Tom and they even mentioned going to San Carlos um, where they were going to live and where they were going to have another boat smaller in Mexico but that's not it. Um, the police kept digging and digging and they realized that somebody tried to get the money out of the account of the Hawks. When they checked surveillance camera, guess who was there? Jennifer and Skylar. But the weirdest thing is they had a power of attorney. And it was signed by the couple. So the police decides to get back at this guy and say, hey, come back. We need to ask you a few more questions. Why would the Hawks give you that power of attorney if he doesn't know you? When they dig a little bit deeper, and I'll tell you what he said, but when they dig a little bit deeper, I mean, they talk to the bank manager. And that day, I mean, the police found out that when they tried to get the money out, a bank manager who knew the couple called the book lady, the, the one that um, managed the hog's money and said, there is a guy here with a lady wanting to take money out of the account with a power of attorney. Do you know anything about it? And that's is when they realize that the hogs were probably not alive. So they ask Skylar, you know, um, why did you have that power of attorney? And he said, well, they wanted to buy property in Mexico. And I have quite a few contacts there. So I was trying to help him out, open an account with that money. It, by the way, I mean, if you're going to help me, I'm going to go with you. But apparently he thought that this made sense in his head. And he said, you know, I was just trying to help them. So he said, well, do you have any witnesses of what happened? Yeah, oh, I have the witness that was there with the notary. His name is Alonso, the notary herself, my wife, Jennifer, my daughter, and of course, Tom and Jackie. So they start contacting the witnesses. Um, Alonso Machine was the, the guy that was the witness and the notary deal. And they realized that this was a guard in jail that Skylar met while he was serving his time. Apparently, when Skylar was released for work program kind of thing, they would do stuff together. They would hang out, eat pizza. And they interview Alonso and he said the same thing as Skylar. The couple was there in the parking lot. Skylar gave them the money. And 
same thing. The notary said the same thing. Uh, that she watched this transaction happen. She notarized the document. The couple drove away. Now, December 13th, 2004, the police decides to go to the media. I mean, they have witnesses that say that this is what happened with Skylar, even though they know something is wrong. It's been 28 days and they, they need the public's help. So, they get a call the next day from a lady, American lady that moved to Mexico for after retirement. And she says, I am looking at the car that you showed in, you know, that belonged to the couple. It's right here in a Mexico tra trailer park in Ensenada. So the police had to go there. And actually, the, the, the Mexican police was there first. But to make a long story short, the owner of the home, you know, was interviewed by the police and he said, this is not my car. I'm just giving it for a friend of mine. And so they asked, who's your friend? And he said, Skylar de Leon. Apparently, Skylar and Jennifer both left the car there with this guy that knew Skylar because Skylar used to go surfing in Mexico and would stay in this guy's apartment or house. So they went back to questioning. I mean, this was just a non-stop questioning of the same people, everyone that was involved in this transaction. The next day, um, he gets arrested. Skylar does. And at this point, he's 25 years old. Okay. Because I don't think I mentioned his age. Um, they also get a search warrant. So they search the garage where he was living in his um, in-law's house garage. And everything that they found there, it was like, oh my gosh, he's not the brightest kid ever. He took the laptop of the couple he had a video camera um that in that video camera i mean there was no way that the couple left it there there was all the footage of their you know last trip and a lot of different trips and places where they've been um, it was gosh it was impossible that they left it there with them and then you would see that in the camera kind of cuts into Skylar and Jennifer's um, Thanksgiving that year. They also find a business card of, from a cop in Mexico, I think. And Pejena, I think is the last name. But this ties down in the end, so don't worry about it. But that was part of what they found. Now, a year later... Uh, John Jarvie came into the picture, okay? And now, this guy was a, according to the police, he was a petty counterfeiter, uh, however you say that. Uh, he would deal with fake money. And John Jarvie met with Skyler when they were in prison. So, bear with me. Apparently, um, when Skylar and John Jarvie met while in jail, Skylar told John that he came from a wealthy family and that he was ready to make an investment and that all he needed was $50,000 so he could get that money and get it landed from, I don't know, a, cart a cartel or whatever. So there was, it was kind of a bigger deal for John Jarvie. So, while Skylar was in jail and she was out on work release, he and John Jarvie went to Mexico. And that, that blows my mind that they are allowed to go into Mexico and then come back while they're in jail, 
doesn't make sense. I don't think that should be a right. I don't think that's right, but I can't really explain it. That's what happened, right? So whatever they did to do that worked. While they were in Mexico, according to this investigation, remember that there was a business card from a police that was trying to bring the case from Mexico to here because they knew that whoever killed this guy was from the U.S. or traveled from the U.S. with him that day because John Jarvey ended up dead that time when he went with Skylar. So Skylar went with him to Mexico, slit his throat, and then came back by himself with the money. Uh, I, I just don't get it. But uh, he hurries back uh, to make it to prison for the night time. I mean, this he was questioned uh, back then in 2003, but the police got nothing on him, so he was quickly released. Uh, but this guy, really, there is something wrong with him. How how do you play the system to actually be out and murder somebody in another country and then come back? Okay. Now, that was kind of a side note because it's going to tie in the end, and that's kind of tying itself to the business card that I just mentioned. Now, the police, in the meantime, they're not worried about this guy, John Jarvie. I mean, they will be later, but they, they don't know how it ties down to Skylar at this point. But they go back to Kathleen Harris. This is the notary, and she had a spotless record and never has been in trouble so they think we have to break her if if there's somebody that is lying maybe we can get it out of Skylar or the, the the witness but maybe we can push her to the limit she kept repa- repeating the same things she met them at the parking lot they signed the papers Tom and Jackie signed in front of her, they put their fingerprints, and then they left. Um, she started hesitating and being nervous. She was questioned by different detectives. And in the end, she didn't say anything. However, they did break her. Because the next day, she got an attorney, she called, and she came clean about everything that happened that night and she stopped being so scared about her notarizing something that she was not present to notarize. She said that she never met the couple, that she was giving the documents, that she was paid, and that's why she did it. She didn't I don't know how much they paid her, but just so you know. Now they contact Alonso Machine. Remember he was the, the jail guard and they kind of give him the details. Um, he, he he starts talking about how Skylar told him that he had money, that he was in the Power Rangers. Again, kind of the same thing that he told John Jarby. Um, he said, you know what? Okay, so he has money. He, he was part of Power Rangers. And still, he goes to Alonso and said, hey, you want to make some money? We can make $2 million because I am, on top of all that, a child actor and everything, and was rich. I am an international hitman. And I like, I only kill bad people, though. I don't go to good people. I find the drug dealers and the criminals, and I get paid to get rid of them. And what I do is I take them out to the sea and I toss them overboard, right? Okay, so Skylar decided to kind of hire Alonso and said, I'll give you $1 million if you help me. Uh, This is a couple, so we need to get on this boat and we'll get all the money from their savings account and we'll get even a yacht. 
So they this was the guy who was with Skylar when they went the first time. So this was rewind to the time that they first Tom and Jackie met the interested buyer the first time. Okay. So they get this call from this guy that says, I want to purchase your yacht. And they said, well, you can come and meet us at this time, blah, blah, blah. And Alonso and this guy, Skyler, went together to go take a look. Now, you have to understand that Tom was not five years old. And he was an ex probation officer. I mean, he just retired of that. So he dealt with a lot of convicts and a lot of people who wouldn't be truthful. So he just didn't believe it. He said, These guys have not the money, they don't have the money to buy our yacht. You know, they were not going to give them a chance. They cannot afford to buy it. I'm not going to waste my time. But then Skylar calls Jennifer and says, you know, they're kind of doubting me. Just bring the baby. Come here and charm them with your pregnancy and blah, blah, blah. And that happened. As soon as Jennifer came in, she realized um, that Jackie was in love with the baby and the idea that she was pregnant. And so they just charmed themselves into making the couple believe that, hey, we do have the money. We're a regular family. We're not trying to rip you off. But as soon as they got there, Skylar realized that Tom was a very strong man, very fit. And even though Skylar was younger, he's kind of a skinny guy, not too strong. And he didn't think that he could do it by himself or even with the help of Alonso. So he talks to Alonso and they end up finding a strong man. And um, this guy was a criminal, of course. He he was a part of, I think it was part of uh, some kind of a gang in, what is it called? The other, no, it's not South Beach, it's Long Beach. Uh, he was part of this gang in Long Beach and so the day that they took the the actual yacht for a test drive it came Alonso who was already uh, introduced to the couple this other friend who was a big guy and I don't know how Tom didn't realize that this was a gang member he looked like one he act like one but I don't know what Skylar said to convince him that, hey, he's just going to be here. I don't know if testing the mechanics, whoever, whatever he said. So they all went out. This big black guy, Skylar Lonzo. And th- this guy, I mean, this big guy was kind of scary. I mean, you could tell that he was not the kind of guy that you would want to mess with. Okay. So now fast forward to November 15th. Uh, Apparently, that was, well, okay, let's go back a little bit. Now, when they came along the boat, um, the yacht, they set out to Catalina Island, okay? And that's where everything started to go really, really bad. Now, they separated Jackie from Skylar. So, John... um, who was this other guy, Uh, I think his name, you know, the the gang member, I think his name was John F. Kennedy, if I'm not mistaken. And this guy, John and Skylar, went to take uh, on Tom while Jackie was in the kitchen. So uh, Skylar couldn't do it by himself. So he got the help from John and they ended up uh, handcuffing Tom. Alonso had to deal with Jackie, so when he heard, when she heard the struggle and tried to get out, he got her. They put him in the bed together. They begged for their lives. They, Jackie was just so devastated. She knew what was coming, and she, she just couldn't stop saying, "We trusted you. Why would you do this to us?" 
you know she was looking forward to the sale of this yacht so they could be with family so there was a part of one of the documentaries that i watched that said that you know um tom kind of grabbed her hand and said wherever we're going we're going together so don't worry I just can't even imagine. But that's not the worst. That's coming. Um, they put them upstairs. They took them upstairs and they ended up making them sign all the documents. Yes, all of them. The power of attorney, the sale of the yacht, everything. So, uh, so uh, Skylar brought this anchor that he found and he ended up handcuffing them there. Uh, Tom tried to kick Skylar. Well, he did kick Skylar in the groin, and Skylar laughed and continued to do what he was doing. I mean, Tom knew what this meant being handcuffed to an anchor in the deepest point of the ocean. That they could reach, of course, nearby. I think it was 34 feet. And at that time, and this is just so, so, so horrible, he tosses the anchor and the couple is pulled across the deck and they're thrown into the ocean alive. Um, Skylar says woohoo and watches until the water is still again I just I just it's just too much for me I'm sorry it is just too much uh, I don't understand why I, I think it's my love for the ocean and my love for the water that makes me respect it so much and just to know that this couple lived for being in the ocean and the irony that they ended up dying there in the worst way possible it just bugs me so much so this bunch of geniuses decided to drink a beer and wanted to go fishing that's what really happened but the police didn't know it yet they even tried to give immunity to Jennifer and she turned it down because she was so confident that she was so clean in this whole thing but she was charged two days after her last interview she was 23 years old and she wasn't on the boat but she didn't want to turn her husband in, so she ended up being part of the whole thing. I mean, the police was so desperate to find the answers of this case that they just really didn't care if they had to give this immunity to this lady. Even though they knew that she was part of it. She kept saying that she, she didn't know that he killed a couple and uh, he already done it and she didn't say anything to the police because she was scared of Skylar she said that she was forced into it but the police found proof otherwise apparently Jen was in charge uh, she was the brains, actually, of the whole operation. I mean, Skylar wasn't bright enough to come up with it. And Skylar wouldn't do anything without Jennifer's approval. He was that kind of guy. He is that kind of guy. The one that wants to be liked by everyone. And he wants to get your approval. And the police got proof that as he was on the boat and came back, he would call her every five to ten minutes. So she was not physically on the boat. 
but you knew what was going on. They have footage of her trying to get the money out of the couple's account. She was even kind of smiling while she was doing it. But she got ended up getting life in prison because, you know, Skylar would call, well, now I have them handcuffed in the bed and, you know, what do I do next? Or what should I do? Should I keep going? Should I do this? Should I do... And who knows what kind of things I talked about. But she was calling the shots. I mean, on October 2008, he, Skyler, was uh, in court, of course, and he was charged with a couple's murder, and he actually was also charged for John Jarvis. And he confessed to all of them. It was kind of interesting to know it was a whole deal that I'm not going to go into it because it really won't take us anywhere. But the lawyer knew that if he said, well, I'm innocent, he was going to face the death penalty. So he was like, you know, we'll have a better chance if we say that you're guilty. Apparently he even put up a sign saying that he was guilty or something like that. And, you know, I'll try to convince him to not give you the death penalty. We'll talk about how verbally abused you were, how your father abandoned you and you have abandonment issues and that you were sexually abused, uh, how they put a toothpick between your nails so you wouldn't bite your nails. And... uh, I mean, the lawyer tried his best. But in the end, everyone knew that he was sorry that he got caught. He was not sorry for what he did. He was trying to impress everyone. He's been trying to do that for his entire life. He got the death penalty. And the gang member, John F. Kennedy, he also got the death penalty. A lot of lies started to come up. Like the fact that he was in the Marines, but he was not part of that elite group. He just barely made it and he only stayed for a couple of weeks. There was a detective, and I think it was the DA as well, if I'm not mistaken, that said that Skyler was the best liar that he's ever seen in his very long career. Alonso, since he ended up confessing and helping this investigation, well, even though all that, he got 20 years, but not death penalty. And, you know, in California, there is a lot of uh, different um, laws and things that get revoked. And then they get so, yeah, they're not going to be they're not um, they're probably going to be in jail for the rest of their lives. Skyler and the gang member, John F. Kennedy. But they're not they're not going to kill them. The motive. Now, you probably wonder, well, why? Why? Was it because they were broke? They could have done something different. Well, apparently the whole thing was in Skylar's mind for pain of surgery to change his gender. According to an interview with, I think it was part of the 2020 thing, he said that he always felt like a woman And that's why his father would pick on him and would say that he was not a man or he was not enough of a man for him. And that's why he was trying to toughen him up. I don't know. I don't even know what he was trying to do. But he's always felt like a woman. Um, They found some papers saying that he put down a down payment to change his sex. Um, he also said that he was not interested in men, that he liked girls, 
but he felt like a girl too, which is not uncommon. But that's what he said. He is now legally a woman. He filed the papers and now his name is Skylar Preciosa de Leon. And he gets fem- fe- like panties and he kept his hair long and now he's taking hormones and he is going to have a surgery and and that's w- the part that I shared yesterday on the YouTube community page that a lot of people had different um, opinions on that. There was this girl who was so mad at me because I called him he instead of she. And to be honest, um, it wasn't me trying to be condescending or trying to make a point that he was a guy and not a woman as he changed his sex. But guys, I really give a neff about what he wants. I totally understand that he feels like a woman, but there is no excuse for what he did to this couple in order to change his sex. You have to understand that a pathological liar, that a psychopath will mess with your head to get whatever he wants. And the saddest part of this story is that he's getting what he wants paid by the state of California. Now, he is a woman. He's been trying to for so many years. And now he's taking the hormones in things that he couldn't afford before. Now he's able to afford it being in jail. And he's manipulating this whole thing to get away with what he wants. And that's a true psychopath. I'm not going to go into the details of why taxpayers would have to, you know go to work, leave their kids at home or at school, miss out on family events because you have to be working to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage, uh, to pay your babysitter. Um, And then part of your taxes are going to go to basically reward somebody. I, I, I just, it blows my mind. And, it, and that's not even the worst part. The worst part is that people will take his side and say, well, now he is a she and it's important that we respect his rights. What about this couple's right? What about it? What are we going to do about it? It's like... I, I just hate it. There is no comparison to what he did and what he feels and, and why he needs to change it. There's no comparison. But I feel like this is our reward. You know? This is sending a message out there that, you know, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, no. No. Wrong is wrong. I don't care. I could care less about what he, she, or whatever wants. You know, it's like you telling me you should care about what Ted Bundy wanted. Or Chris Watts wants. I'm sorry. You made a very bad decision. When you decided to do what you did. But don't expect people to reward you. Yet. There is a bunch of people sympathizing with Chris. And in my small platform. I realized there is a lot of people sympathizing with this guy. 
I'm sorry if my grammar, if my way of expressing about Skylar is not the best. I'm sorry if that offends you. I'm sorry to you. But to be honest, I could care less of what Skylar wants. Because he didn't care when this couple was banging for their lives. And he didn't care that they had kids and that they had plans and that they were a couple of good people. Think about it for just a second. What if they were your parents, for goodness sake? What if you knew that your parents were basically drowned or thrown into the ocean alive? Please tell me, please tell me what you feel about that. Oh my goodness gracious, we're giving so much power to these people. And I struggle with this because I'm a Christian and I believe in forgiveness and I believe in grace. And I do believe it, but I'm also human. And there are some cases like this where I'm like, please, please tell me. Please tell me that this is not right. Please somebody confirm my thoughts and my feelings on this matter. Are we just going crazy right now? Are we just so worried about today's trending things about the way you should refer to somebody, which I do understand and I respect and I'm not well versed in it because I don't have anybody in my life. So I may be wrong in the way I express about somebody. But in this case, I don't care what he wants. I don't care what Skylar wants. He's a true psychopath. He is. And you know how I know that? Because I am a person that has very, I mean, I've always been so intuitive about people. I can sit with somebody and within five minutes, I know if it's a good influence or not in my life. I know if I want to have a conversation with that person the next time or if we're going to talk about the weather and the news and something that is completely not related to me. But when I saw Skylar talking to this 2020 guy, I believed him. My goodness sake. I believed that guy. And with that smirk in his face, I just couldn't see it through it. I thought, this guy, poor him. I mean, he had a horrible childhood. He's a victim. I felt that way. Until I ended up finding more information about this case and how he lied his way I mean his life away and got everything that he wanted away some way or another so that kind of made me a little bit mad with myself how can you not see it because you won't see it when it's a true psychopath you won't see it why do you think that people could not believe that Chris Watts did this? Why can, you know, Ted Bundy's girlfriend couldn't believe that he could? Why? Why do you think that? Because it's almost impossible telling because they're good at it. They're good liars. So you can sit here and pretend that you know more than you know and you can tell me the signs of a psychopath but I've experienced it myself if I met Skylar at church if I met Skylar in a coffee shop if I was introduced to this guy in a party and he said oh you know this is uh, my cousin Skylar and uh, you know I would have believed his sad story. I would have chewed up. And I hate that. I hate that he tricked me even through a stupid interview. Gosh, if I met that guy in real life, I could have believed him. 
and I could have said, you know, he's a troubled child or he was a troubled child and he's trying his best to do the best that he can to please people. But I'm sorry, there's a there's a line there. And the line is you cannot be killing people just in the name of pleasing your wife or pleasing yourself to do something that you believe that you deserve. And so everyone else is going to have to pay for what you want or need to do. Newsflash. We all want things. And there's a lot of people in his same position today, feeling like they were born in the wrong body, who do not have the means, yet they're not going to throw a couple alive into the bottom of the ocean to get it. It just is so crazy. It's so crazy that there's people out there. This is the scariest guy. The scariest one, the one that looks like a, I cannot lift a finger to help myself. I I would never do that. I, I mean, you have to look at this interview and you have to tell me, do you see a sign of a psychopath other than the guy in uh, an orange, you know, jail suit? Do you see something that gave you the indication that this guy is able to kill somebody, to get out of the country, kill somebody, come back and get away with it? Do you think that you got that vibe from that guy? I certainly didn't. And I, again, if I met him in real life, I would have never got that vibe from him. And probably felt sorry. I would feel sorry for him and try to help in whatever way I could that's how stupid it is <laughs> not him but the situation itself and, and that's a scary part because no matter how much we learn about this the very good ones at it you can never tell so I can't end this podcast by saying hey guys we learned something new yeah, maybe we did. Truth psychopaths are going to be really hard to spot. And you might know somebody that is a psychopath. Maybe not willing to do what he did. But you might be fooled by somebody who really is not what they say they are. So it's hard to end this podcast. <laughs> because I tr always try to end in a good note. It's something we can learn, something we can apply, something we can do. And in the end, gosh, it feels so random and it feels so like, I don't know. It feels like it shouldn't, I, I don't even know how to feel. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please take the time and leave a comment and let me know what you think. If you think that this is good, that he did what he had to do to... Uh, change his sex, change his name, change his identity, and become what he really is, I am not going to argue with you. I totally get it. I get that part. I'm not talking about that. Um, maybe I'm not referring to Skylar as maybe was requested. But to be honest, it's sometimes really hard to understand. Uh, it, it, it's just so hard for me to care when things get this bad. So, thank you so much for being here today, guys. Please, I'm eager to know what you think, even if you don't agree with me. I really would love to know your thoughts on this case. If you put yourself in the position that those, you know, that the couple was your parents, how did you feel? How, I mean, am I seeing this wrong? I would love to know what you think. So, thanks for being here, guys. Again, super long podcast. As when I get excited, puppies, paws, drinking dogs, welcome to my life. So, I'll talk to you guys soon, guys. Bye.